So today we're almost in the middle of nowhere. This is in the small community of Naples, Oklahoma. And we're here to see a cemetery that I thought you guys might find interesting. So this is the Naples Cemetery. And you can see where it says established in 1864. So let's go inside and just look around a little bit. One of the things you'll see in here, there are several family plot areas that have this ironwork on it. It's pretty neat. You don't see stuff like that in cemeteries too much anymore. It's kind of expensive. This says the Chambers family. And that one right there passed away in 1911. Laura. There's a Virgil. 1914. D.B. Chambers, born 1841 and died 1907. You'll notice here there are Confederate flags in here. There's about 16 Confederate veterans in this cemetery. And uh, there's five of them that are unknown that they think that they know who is buried in there according to the County Historical Society. This is interesting here. There's a few of these. I've been in this cemetery before, but this particular headstone, just kind of a simple little maybe piece of tile there. Just a little child with a heart. Two days old, basically. No, two about two months old, I guess. This, I guess, is one of the Confederate veterans here. So it'd have to be this one right here. Martin V. Wilson. So in addition to, uh, look at that branch falling down right here. Billy Keith Myers. In addition to the Confederate veterans in here, like I said, there's about 16. There's also two, um, no, there's three Union veterans in this. One of the Confederate veterans actually isn't laid to rest in here. It's just basically a cenotaph, so it basically leaves about 15. Now, this cemetery has uh, basically been maintained by someone here locally. Um, the funds are very limited, so that's why you kind of see stuff like this. They're only able to mow it a couple times a year, but it can quickly get overgrown. There's been a Sons of the Confederates organization i guess a chapter that's been um helping out on some of this this is a newer fence here but an older monument there got all kinds of growth there you may hear some cows they're right across from this cemetery and you can see uh, an oil rig where they're drilling over there they also have a new one that's up over that way that you may be able to hear basically sounds like a truck like a diesel rig truck and somehow this is connected to it but you can actually kind of smell it this says brook brookshire 1914 is what that one says back up in there there's a lot of markers in here i'm sure I, I looked it up, there's somewhere around 288 people in here, but there's most likely a lot of ones that aren't marked at all. Um, this is just a rural area. This cemetery has a bunch of people, there, there's of course a lot of children, that says 1907. There's a lot of people in here that were affected by the World War I veterans coming home with the Spanish influenza and so you will see a lot of dates in here that say 1918 where they passed away from the flu in fact that's a neat little bench right there all colored it says Clark kind of a memorial area with some solar powered lights but you'll see um, a lot of 1918 headstone markers in here and there'll be adults and children and everything now according to some people in the area 
um, there's not really a town of Naples and the reason why is because the flu got so bad that it nearly wiped out the population of children here and they had so many passing away this one is 1882 to 1905 they had so many children pass away in 1918 that they were having to bury them um, two and three to a coffin and there's one grave in here it is unmarked but there was a baby that had died an infant I guess and then there was some younger siblings that were twins and so each twin is buried on the side of the baby so there's three in there anytime you see these markers like this with a lamb on top you know it's a child it's kind of hard to read but that says 1904 born and died in 1904 january it's very hard to read and that one has fallen like i said most of these people they do not have relatives around here anymore and i don't know if you've ever priced what it what it costs to uh repair something like this but it is expensive and just simply trying to mow this cemetery is a uh expensive feat all in itself but these things do get old and they do break just over time with weather here we have these ratliff 1850 to 1906 it's quite a memorial there it's nice and tall it's another one of these uh, iron fence Cincinnati iron fence company from Ohio I love these old iron fences you, you just don't see stuff like this in the newer cemeteries anymore this is the wife of Robert Ratliff right here 1852 to 1906 pretty neat monument there as well I don't know if there was ever a photo in there or anything or maybe some other sort of crest and it has popped out or damaged or just withered away a lot of old monuments in here and many of them are just simple little markers or even stones because that was all that they could afford and some of them placed in here with no stone markers at all it may have been broken over time with cattle running across this or it may have just withered away or it may have sank in the ground now this one let's see if we can read the dates it's very hard to read died in 1908 but I almost you almost can't read that date of when they were born it's just kind of eroded away so I, I think it said 1905 I don't think that that flag belongs with that one and this one's kind of withered and busted there are graves throughout this whole cemetery so it spans the whole length of it And here's some dogs barking over there they're not used to seeing people and there is a house over there but I'm trying to respect their privacy and not show it lots of graves in here these right here um, are five Confederate soldiers and they are basically unknown but the county thinks that they know who they are now Let's see if we can show a different angle it's interesting how they're just kind of some mounds like that this is just basically Southern Cross basically designating that um, they served honorably in the Confederate Army and and you can kind of see who they are they're come from all over there's some texas guys and some louisiana guys there's some veterans from all over in here uh, some of the 
Union ones are from up north. Um, can't remember exactly where. It's pretty neat. All five of these are in here. And uh, took them a while to do some research and figure out who these were or who they believe that these people are. It's just an old cemetery with some pretty cool history. It's a lot of little markers. You can see some in here though where the, that's kind of newer like they have came in and maybe it had a bigger one as you kind of see the outline through here and the bigger marker might have um, fallen apart and broken so they've came in maybe and uh, placed a newer one that's what both of those look like so that's always great uh, when you see them do that this is 1909 to 1912 Looked like there were some things in here, maybe some seashells that were placed on this one. This one's 1902 to 1912. Daughter and son of H. E. and L. E. Ogle. And uh, you can see another monument there that's kind of broken. So it withered away a little bit might be all there maybe it's supposed to be separate but it looks like this is supposed to be on top of that I'm not sure this is another child 1905 to 1906 it's amazing how many little babies are in here just kind of a, like a little brick column with a little placard on there and a lamb down at the bottom that says our babe the last name is Ramsey and there's another little marker there then you have these these are the markers that you would see from the actual funeral home so they never had uh, a permanent marker placed in it you can actually still see remnants of the piece of paper from the funeral home there it's not legible at all pretty neat though this is all of this right over there and here. This is all the Ramsey family. It's quite a few of them. And here we have a Confederate veteran marker right there. No name or anything on that one. They've been doing some research. It was about three years ago, I guess, this... Uh, Sons of the Confederacy tried to offer some help and I, I think they did as far as mowing and some funds and trying to identify some of the markers in here. Dogs going crazy. So this one right here, Isham Clark, Private Company E, 24th Mississippi Infantry, Civil War, passed away in 1924. So he's in the Battle of Shiloh, Lookout Mountain, that's what it says. So right here you can see George Griswold, Private Company A, 14 Michigan Infantry, the Civil War. And that is one of the Union veterans that's in the cemetery. And you can see several other members of the Griswold family. I think that could be one right there. There's also a Griswold here. Like I said there's about two or three Union veterans in this cemetery. That's one right there. This marker right here. It's just basically kind of a homemade cement stone and you can see where they've etched in there. W.V. Motley. 1915 to 1947. Or at least there's a marker. There's many of these graves in here that are just stones placed in the ground with no writing at all on it you basically have to do what you can afford and some of these rural cemeteries are like that this one has a pretty good lean to it last name is Dixon Eliza Dixon and born in 
1860, died in 1905. And there's an infant son with the last name Dixon. Well, these markers over here are pretty nice. Jones family. These are newer style markers. This says Brookshire right here. If you remember, there's a Brookshire right over there in that front corner. It's a nice la uh, large marker. If that says Jones. Those are nice. There's 1930, 1918, 1925. I'm pretty confident that those are uh, newer markers that were placed here and it could be that some of the markers were maybe broken like that and the families have come in here and placed new ones. This is uh, Rebecca Harris, 1860 to 1903. There's kind of a homemade style marker right there. And uh, 1911 is the date on it. Last name is Harris. It's held up really well. They may have done some patchwork on it right here, but overall, it's held up really nicely. So this one right here says, looks like 1896 to 1906. It's like Coleman Anderson. So it looks all intact, but there's something on the back side there. And I don't know if that's another marker or something or what. It's all kinds of growth of different things growing on it. There's the, there's the foot marker to him. So I'm not exactly sure what that is. If that was just another extended piece of it or another marker from somewhere else. But here we have one that's leaning pretty good right here. If you look from the side and tell that it's about to slide off. The last name is Dorsey. Neil Dorsey died in 1901, born in 1825. You can see the Mason symbol right there. And here is a homemade marker McQuirk I guess that's how you say that but here's the base and it's just slid right off but it's still staying up right there and then right here this is still the Dorsey family this is another Confederate veteran I guess 1851 to 1910 Looks like M.E. Dorsey. Pretty interesting. It's not a super large cemetery, but for a rural cemetery, it's not small either. Last name on this one is Wade. W-A-I-D-E. It's showing up pretty good on camera, but 1894 to 1898 just a child this is another child in here 1899 to 1900 robert son of wt and aj lambert and it looks as though there is still the funeral home marker there it's a pretty old one there these ones here there there's several of them there's one there here they're all the uh, Sherwood family. Thomas M. Sherwood. This one's Thomas J. And then here we have a marker that plates just basically torn up. There's some dates on that one though, looks like. L.L. Sherwood. What does this say? I guess that's maybe the patent. February 1925. This is the Jones and True family. The trues right here. Not sure if this is another Confederate uh, marker right here. Let's see. McNeely is the last name. 1848 to 1893, I believe. 
This one's getting really difficult to read. Maybe it shows up a little bit better on camera than it does in person, but it's extremely hard to read. And it is the McNeely, if you look at that. That one is 1938, 1857 to 1938. That's one of the old funeral home markers too that's a temporary marker, but they're nice. They're really nice, so you can see where it's kind of held up and can be made into the actual marker itself. I do like those when a funeral home used those like that. That's 1830 to 1905. Last name is Holden. This is in the far back corner of the cemetery, and it, this headstone is just all black here. And um, it's leaning pretty good. Let's see if we can get anything off of it. Looks like Annie from 1894 to 1899. That's what's listed on the left side. And the last name is Johnson. And on the right side is an infant. Looks like uh, born and died on February 14th, 1899. So that 1899 year was a rough one for the Johnson family. Lost both of their babies. Pretty sad. This little area is interesting. It has a chain link fence around it, but it's not very tall. If I was guessing, just maybe about two feet tall. And you'll see little funeral home markers that are in here, like those right there. But there are some, there's kind of this cedar tree that's right here low. But you can see where there's some actual markers, and this is the Andrews family, 1861 to 1920, 1870 to 1964, that's 1890 to 1931, and then they have some foot markers that are right up over there. Pretty neat to see a little fence like this. I've never seen one that's that tall. Only about two foot, I guess. It's difficult to say, but this is one that passed away in 1918. So it could have been a victim of the Spanish influenza. September of 1902 to October of 1918. It looks like Retha Agnes Wood is the name. This is Nora, daughter of Gilpatrick, J.L. and R.J. Born in 1877 and passed away in 1915, it looks like. But I just kind of wanted to show you that growth that's on there. It's pretty interesting. And, and I think it's beautiful looking to see growth on there like that. But not everybody thinks so. Luda Woodward is that one, 1898 to 1918, so it's another one that the flu could have gotten. And maybe this one too. It's just basically an old cinder block designating a spot there. No name or anything. This is Lee, son of Mr. and Mrs. D. M. Clark. 1899 to 1922. Just to kind of show you a close up there, you can see a crown there. Some branches. It says at rest in the middle of a gate opening up, symbolizing the gates of heaven, I believe. There's some more of the Clark family right there. This is an interesting one. That is the original funeral home marker there, but what's on the back side might give us a little bit more information. It says, in loving memory of Harvey, what does that say? Tyrion? Tartan? It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to have to go back and look on the video. But there is a plate right there. Put that right back. Might have to try to look that up on Find a Grave or something, but gives us a clue of who that might be. 
it's very hard to see in person so hopefully the camera shows it a little bit better than what it does in person it's kind of dented up a little bit but it's an interesting little marker there I haven't seen one quite like that before Mary Frances Windling daughter of Theodore and Ruby July 15th 1938 to April 26 1941 and then right there beside it I don't know if this is marking another grave or not but it's a big old angel here and you can see where it's starting to break apart no telling how old this is some of the definition of her face has worn down a little bit she's actually leaning maybe just a tiny bit here but it is pretty in the sunlight like that the way it's casting a shadow this is pretty amazing Willie son of HB and Sarah J Barbie 1905 to 1926 I think what's amazing to me is this is the funeral home marker right here and you can see the, the Sun is now setting and it's kind of going in the west but there's direct sunlight on there and if you look closely there is a piece of paper in there and you can make out some of the writing not much but some of it is still there and if you think about that being here since 1926 and there's still paper and they're still writing on it and I realize this is kind of sealed but water does seep through there eventually as you can see some of the rust and the water marks on there and the papers kind of shrunk but with all of the freezing temperatures and the heat and the snow and the ice and the water from rain what kind of paper and chemicals were used in that print like the ink because that was some darn good ink seems like you set out something nowadays and it just quickly fades if it's left out in your car look at this this is just kind of some simple pipe type fencing here it says Mary Lawson Keys 1862 to 1898 just kind of this pipe style fencing and a chain Elza Childers 1883 to 1942 now same pipe here's some threading here so that's how you know that it's just some sort of pipe this is obviously the same family inside here Russell Childers 1921 to 1932 there's the infant son 1909 there's no telling if there's actually some other people that are located there and there's no marker for them can't read anything on that one at all everything's just kind of worn down now here's a here's a marker just basically the funeral home marker and a stone would be neat if we could read this there is a piece of paper in there and some faint traces of ink but it's not legible so there's really no telling who's right there when you're in these rural areas sometimes people don't have money and even in city areas people don't have money but I'm not exactly sure what this is if this is just something they fabricated from a long screw and then a piece of bar that they've been around but this is designating a grave but no names, dates, or anything. It's just all they had to mark their beloved family member with, or friend. This is interesting right here. There's a nice gate on here. And it's got some kind of fencing right here on the gate, but there's these poles here. And the only thing designating the spot, as far as if there was ever a fence there, is just this chain right here. So I don't know if the fence kind of fell down or if this is all it ever was, was a chain like this. There might be several, well, I think there is several graves in here, but it says Phelps, Mother Maggie. But you can see part of a 
block right there that could have been a base of something, but it kind of looks like a, just a plain cinder block. These are interesting right here. I guess it's just the last names, Rogers and Dorsey. And Rogers says 1918 and Dorsey is 1924. It just looks like it's some welding beadwork that's on those big thick pieces of steel there. So there's another one with the iron fence work all the way around. You can see, you only see these in the old cemeteries, but these crosses like this, and these are acorns right on the corner. Not a cheap fence at all. But inside there, this looks like a newer marker just because of this etching that's in there. So it's probably been replaced by someone more recently. Mildred Irene Hughes, February 7th, 1919, daughter of James and Bessie Maud Spears. Quite a fence around one little grave, though. And this is Samuel Nunn, 1866 to 1928, is what it says right over here. It's kind of a simple little fenced-in area. This one's different too. It's just kind of basically a cement stone and they've placed a piece of glass over the name. And uh, it looks like it says Reverend J.P. something. And then it says daughter or something. But that's kind of different too. I mean, that's just basically mailbox lettering that's in there that they've kind of tacked in there and sealed over it with a piece of glass so it lasts longer. But that glass has kind of gotten all moldy and fogged over from the inside so it's kind of difficult to read so anyways this is just kind of a small cemetery it's not too large but it's not tiny it's just an old historic cemetery that houses some old veterans in here i thought it was noteworthy but thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time